So you spend so much money, time, energy. It takes forever. You finally get your loved one to go to treatment. And unfortunately, most families totally sabotage the situation once they get to this point. And it's painful because sometimes it takes years to get to the point where your loved ones agreeing to go to treatment. And that's why we have family recovery expert Campbell Manning on board with us today. Campbell has two sons in recovery. She's also a licensed professional counselor and a licensed addiction counselor and just an overall parent recovery ninja. She's going <laughs> to share her wisdom with us. And I love what Campbell's done for us is she's sort of broken down the, okay, we're to the treatment stage, but there's a lot of scenarios that can happen. And so Campbell's broken it down to, for us into like the four most common ones. And she's going to walk us through how to handle each different kind of scenario. So Campbell, if you don't mind, would you lay out, kind of tell us what the four main scenarios look like? Sure. So the, the, fir the first one is my kid has agreed to go to treatment, but not till tomorrow or the next day, because that's when they have a bed. So we have a, we're going to have a, a gap here, just a, mm -hmm. maybe a small gap, but nonetheless, a gap in willingness and delivery. Yeah, between when they said they'd go, but, but when they said it and they're actually they're there. going, you don't want any gap there if at all possible. No, right. I try to get, yeah, which we try to go from yes to car to go yeah so there's that then there's um when kids leave early and mm -hmm. by early i mean before their treatment is completed by a lot by by 50 percent or so okay and then there's kids who leave maybe before they have completed the ultimate experience but maybe it's not their first go round. Maybe they've completed several others and relapsed and are now back. And so some kids leave toward the end of a subsequent treatment, and that's different. And then there's what to do while they're actually in treatment, especially in the first month, yes. sort of what to expect from, from what the words you're going to hear from your kids and, and how that's going to, they, they're going to try to sway you with what they say. And that's such a critical point, and I'm glad you brought that up. And I do want to say, even though Campbell is talking a lot about parents and kids, everything Campbell and I are going to share with you today really can be pretty easily transposed to if this is a, an adult, if this is wow. a spouse. I mean, the the language might be slightly different, but the same scenarios happen. So, oh yeah, I say the same things to. I've got several wives right now whose husbands are in many of these phases, and I'm saying the same things. Right. So let's start with the, the natural logical place, I think, is to start with getting them there. So let's go to that first scenario, Campbell. Tell us a little bit about that, how that happens and how to navigate that situation the best okay. you can. And I think the first thing to recognize is that what I'm going to be talking about um, are not initial conversations that, that these family members are having with a counselor. So in this particular case that I'm thinking about, um, someone else in our practice has been working with this family for months and months to sort of give this kid the space to make the deals and not keep them, to make the promises and, and break them. And for me to work with them to recognize that that's what he's doing. Mm -hmm. And I, I use the metaphor a lot where um, in, in this kind of scenario is it's like catching a, a, a sailfish or a giant fish where, you know, you don't just feel you've got the fish on the hook and then just yeah, one nibble and, and then throw it on the yeah. boat, right? Mm -hmm. First of all, you can't, it'll break the line. Right. So a lot of times with addiction, what we have to do is we have to let the, the loved one, whether it's a spouse or a child, take the rut line away and mm -hmm. swim, swim, swim and get tired and then bring it in a little bit, let it out, mm -hmm. swim, 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 which is really hard to do as a parent because you know, every time you let the line out and they swim, 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 something horrible could happen. Mm -hmm. But it's almost always required. Right. It, it's the way you're actually going to make this work without losing, without the whole thing falling apart, without yes, the fish getting away. Mm -hmm. That's how the fish determines my life is unmanageable. I'm out here just flopping around and I'm not going anywhere. Right. And that's what we all know for to get our kids into recovery is their life has to be de deemed unmanageable by them. 
Mm -hmm. the only way they can do it is to get out there and just get exhausted and think, I can't do this anymore, which is exactly the verbiage I heard from one of my kids, which is, I don't want to come home. I need help. I can't do this anymore. Can I come home to go get help? Right. I'm just done. Right. I can't do it. And so the scenario that you're really describing is kind of like, we're past all that, like letting the real out, like we're past all like the invisible intervention, the crap we've, you've done all that. So you set all the right groundwork, but now we're sort of, sometimes you get, you get to the wall, you get to the line in the sand where you're just like, okay, like we're here. Yeah. So this is where parents are. I can't live like this anymore. This isn't working in my home. This isn't working for the family in general. So you either go to treatment or find somewhere else to live or some version of that. Right. And so like in the case we had this week is the kid was like, okay, fine, whatever, I'll go. And here's the first mistake that was made. The mother said, well, honey, it doesn't sound like you want to go. And in the minute she starts, I was like, you know what, dude, let's you and I go back into our office. You know, I don't let Kim work with your parents. I was like, no. no. A, a whatever, a WTF, a shrug of the shoulders, that's a hard yes. And yeah. you just run with it. And, and Amber always says, it's not that they want to go, it's that they're willing to go. And so a shrug, a whatever, you win, this sucks. That's all, that's all willingness. Stop talking, go. Oh my gosh, yes. Don't, don't say, are you doing it for yourself? Don't say, are you sure you're ready? If they oh, say I've yes. Well, maybe after we get a haircut and a new suitcase, Mm -hmm. like we no, we're not going to get a haircut before we go treatment. They have barbers there. Right. Yeah. So, so don't fall into that would be the first thing. Do not fall back into the trap of listening to any deals or promises. We're past that. We've, we've already had the deals. We've already had the promises, but it happened this week in this session. And the mom was like, well, maybe I was like, I looked at my client who was the kid and I was like, dude, you and I both know that. I mean, I had to like almost become his own counselor because the parents were trying to undo it. Mm -hmm. So don't make deals. Do not cave. You have come to this point that has been very difficult to come to. It's super uncomfortable as a parent to get to this point. So don't get there if you're not ready, but when you're ready, don't backtrack. No and remember what Campbell said, this isn't your first line of defense. Like we're not, this is not our primary way of doing this. This is like last, last, yeah, this is the last line of defense. Yeah. Yeah. I think the other thing that you have to recognize at this point is that they may change their mind between now and when we go tonight or tomorrow, they may say, screw this. I'm not going. You have to hold your mind, but then you have to tolerate that they may go live with a friend or, you know. A grandma family might come bail them out or a family member will right. come and bail them out mm-hmm. and then of course you have to wait for it to get worse mm-hmm. because that's the kid's not going to tap back out until that person friend or family member gets sick and tired of being sick and tired and or the problem gets so much larger that your child gets sick and tired of being sick and tired man Campbell, you know that's like that's like you got the fish to the boat it's coming up it's getting in there and the line breaks oh Yes, that's exactly no. what it feels like. Oh. Or a whale comes <laughs> and takes the fish from oh, you. Yeah. Even worse. Yes. yes. I was, I was like, my heart's hurting hearing it. Yes. Yes. It happens though. And unfortunately, but I've I've never seen it not unhappen, which is we get right back to where we were before the whale came and took the, the family member. You as the parents, you guys have to remember no one loves your child as much as you do. So your fr- his friends, his friends' parents, even his grandparents or an aunt or uncle, they don't love him as much as you do. So they're right. going to get to this point faster Way than faster. you did. And you just do not fall back into it by trying to educate that person, trying to warn that person, trying to lecture that person. Or when they say, come get your dang gum kid, you say, uh-uh. Yeah. I'm not coming to get my dang you gum ask kid. For it. You, you ask for it. You ask for it, it's yours. <laughs> right. Yeah. So you don't, you don't try to control the, that situation. You just sit and wait. Yep. You're waiting and waiting is different than doing nothing. It may feel like nothing, but you're not, you're strategizing. You're talking with your family recovery counselor, coach, you got the plan and you are waiting. So you're not going to miss the next moment. And you're staying on the same page. Mm-hmm. If you're married with you're the staying other spouse, on the same right. page. And, and it, 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 I can't imagine 
how difficult that is to have it and have it snapped away, but it's imperative that you hold. Yes. Even if you're not married, if you can be on the same page, your problem's going to solve faster. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. So, so, and then Canva always says like behind the scenes, you need to have pick the treatment center because when they say yes, you need to literally put them in the car right then and take them. And if you, the, the worst thing you do is start calling treatment centers and scrambling oh. and trying to figure out your interest. I guarantee you, you're going to lose that. You're going to lose now. that. hundred percent. hundred percent. No, you know, you know what your finances are. You know, if you're utilizing your insurance, what the coverage is, what the difference is. And you have at most two options. And I, I don't even advocate giving them an option. I say, here's where we're going. Right. But know what you're doing. And, and I tell parents this all the time, call them, get all your questions out of the way, ascertain whether they have a bed and then stay in touch with them. Like every seven to 10 days, this happens all day long. You're not going to irritate them. They've got people that answer the phones, 500 people call and one kid goes. So don't worry about that, but know where your bed options are. Yeah. So, so when Kevin says have one option, you're saying give them one option. You may want to have two or three oh, because yeah. there may not be a bed at the moment when your window is open and you need to make moves when your window is open. And Correct. I love that you said, ask all the questions. And I would add to that, try to um, think of the questions your kid would ask, which are probably different than yours. Like, can I have my cell phone? Can I have nicotine? Can I call my girlfriend? Whatever. Find out the answers to those because those are the roadblocks you know your kid's going to throw up and they're going to ask you, be ready. And you know, you know your loved one, you know what their roadblocks are going to be, you know what they're going to ask. Find out the answers so you're ready. But also bear in mind that unless you're as long as your kid is 17 or older, they're going to have to call and do a five to 10 minute intake call themselves. But mm -hmm. I tell parents this can be happening in the car on the way. Yes. And I don't care if you get on the phone and they're like, yeah, but you can't come till tomorrow morning. You get in the car and you get on the way and you spend a night in whatever town that is in, in a hotel. Yes. Like don't go back home and then drive. No. like, I love that. What Kimball's saying is if the bed's not open till tomorrow, or maybe you got to wait two days, go to the place, get a hotel, stay the night, cross the street from the place. Yeah. Don't stay at home because if you stay at Be home, there. you're going to have a runner. You're going to have a runner. I remember with our first son, when we were moving him, you even said, he's going to want to go home and talk to the dog. The answer to that is the dog's at the vet. Like, no, we're not talking to the dog. I need my toothbrush. I bought a new one. <laughs> okay. But I need my favorite hoodie. I've got I'll it. mail it to you. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Don't. I'll pay the big postage. You'll get it. <laughs> Whatever. Right. Yeah, yeah. Don't go home. Mm -hmm. If at all possible, don't go home. So what do you do? So that's getting them there, Campbell. What do you do when you get them there and then they want to leave? Because that's the next thing you're facing. So there's two, two ways I'm going to look at this. The first one is I'm going to do it with they are going to leave, not they're talking to you about wanting to leave. I'm going to save that one for the end. Okay. So this next scenario is they, they leave. They either get kicked out or someone comes to get them or they just walk out and jump on a bus because they've been working for a month and they have money. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if this is the case, then this is sort of the line just got snapped on you again. You do not rescue them financially. You do not in any way be part of this except to talk on the phone and validate, empathize, be kind and nice and compassionate. Yeah, you don't have to be mean. You don't have to no. be mad at them, but you don't fix it. It doesn't happen. So there's no point in being mad or you can be mad. You can be mad in your private thoughts, mm -hmm. but there's no point in yelling. There's no point in lecturing. You just remind them, you know, we said we would support you in recovery. You've left early. So tag your it. Like mm -hmm. you've made an adult decision and we hope it goes well. Mm -hmm. So you don't lecture, you don't lecture, you don't rescue, you probably have to understand that it's going to go south again because this kid has left early they're not ready to leave there's not enough brain recovery addiction thinking has kicked back in and found reasons to get out of there and get back out and get its party going again mm -hmm. so you've got to tolerate that's going to go south again so then you while you're being kind and compassionate also go back and realize do we want to do this again do we have the money do mm -hmm. you know can he go back to where he just left 
you know, sort of start to get your side of that circle of when this goes south and this kid taps back out again, what do we have to offer? That's the behind the scenes, right. That's behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. And you have to recognize like, this is again, educational, the stages of change are going to change. The stages of recovery are going to go up and down like they do. And in the downs, you run the risks that they're going to want to get out of there. The disease is going to take back over. The first little bit they go, they may be in the pink cloud and they may be like, this is awesome. Thank God that other problem is over. I feel a sense of relief. I feel like much less shame. So that pink cloud, which is that initial big high, often does like look like it's going to sustain, but it doesn't. And you have to be prepared for that. You're, you're going to get pushed back at some point while they're in treatment. Mm -hmm. Most of the time you get it right up front that first and, and maybe even second week. If you don't get it, then it might come in the middle, right? Yep. Okay. So this scenario I'm talking about, this kid had been in treatment for probably 90, maybe even hundred days, and but was getting ready to transition to this, to the bigger concentric circle outside of treatment mm -hmm. and his disease kicked back in. It was like, mm, if I sign a lease for six to 12 months, I'm stuck in the city. I don't want to do this. You know, he starts saying, well, I don't really like the people I'm supposed to live with. It was the typical argument. So mm -hmm. he left while the parents were on a trip and they just wanted to like, when I talked to them earlier this week, they're like, well, we just want to tell him he's screwing up. And I'm like, it's over. He's there. He's already it's already drinking. You already know that. I said, stop checking his checking account because it's just going to drive you insane. Just recognize, can he go back to where he just left? And we want this to become unmanageable. So if he's at a bar and he's going through his money, mm -hmm. it's not a terrible problem. Right. You're, cause the, cause what you're telling me is almost like, okay, they feel like the kid is relapsed, but, but the parents are relapsing too in this situation, mm -hmm. right? They're, they're trying to go back to their old behaviors. Your job is not to relapse with them. <laughs> so that really does require not feeding catastrophic thinking. Yes. Okay. So yes, it's probably in this case, my, my money is, this is going to go South. And I told them that I said, I do believe this is going to go South, but we're going to handle it differently. We're going to handle it calmly. We're going to handle it maturely and we're going to handle mm -hmm. it with patience. Yes. Right. And so even though you may feel like that, you're not going to communicate that to the person because you're just gonna, when, you, when you start telling someone they're going to fail, then you've literally set it up. So definitely. Well, and then when they do fail, they're like, well, screw you. You never believed in me anyway. Right. That's yeah. a good point. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. All right. And so then the third scenario is one that um, I was telling you earlier, Amber, like, when I'm having the conversation with this family this week that I've known for years, because we've gone to treatment, we've left, we've relapsed, we've gone to treatment, we've left, we left. So this third scenario is this kid has been in his third or fourth treatment, like long-term, like more than three months. And so he's pretty treatment savvy. He does know what he's doing. He has he has a job that he really likes. He saved enough money to pay half of the car that he just got. Wow, that's um, huge. He has a he has a sponsor. He has a ton of people in recovery he knows. He's not leaving the city. He's just left this long-term sober living house he was in. And he literally just said, I am sick to death of living like this. I just want to go try it. Mm -hmm. So the parents call and they're like, oh, what are we going to do? This is terrible. And I'm like, you know what? Let's look at it like it's not terrible. Let's look at it as if he may be quite successful. He's got a lot of serotonin because of the friends he has, the car he has, the job he has. He has a lot of a good chemical formula that we, mm -hmm. I think, could work. If we act as if it can work and we point out what he's good at and what's going well in his life and how much we love him, we're going to continue to feed those positive things. Yeah. His birthday is coming up and they're like, well, I guess we should just cancel this trip. And I'm like, no. He's, you should go have his birthday. Like, yeah. we love you dearly. We'll support you knowing whether you verbalize it or not, which I highly recommend they didn't, is they're not going to fix this financially. Right. If, he, if he blows it and he can't pay his bills and loses, they're not going to fix it, but we still going to take him a birthday gift and take him out for lunch and go see, I said, go see his job. He's so proud of it. Ask for a tour. Right. Like, because this scenario might actually work out okay. The other scenario is not likely to work out okay, no. but this this person had been in treatment for for a long time, and and there was probably some legitimacy of like, 
okay, like I'm over this. Like, and it's gone from being a 17 year old to a 20 year old. So he's got a lot of maturity. He's grown a lot. Um, so, you know, I, I have, a, I said, I would give it 50, 50 at the least. I might maybe even give it 70, 30. Okay. Wow. Did those parents, were they like, who, where's Campbell? Like, who, exactly what snatchers? the dad said. Like, exactly. Who am I talking like, to? Yeah, I've known these people a while. And he goes, where is Campbell? And what have you done with her? And I was like, I know I am actually surprising myself, but I want you to look at this in a different light so that you stay healthy and mm-hmm. you stay intact. There's no point in, in everybody rushing to the bottom of the drain if it's possible that things will float around on the top for a while, if not forever. Right. And in that case, I also did remind them that even if he does you know, hang out with some people at work and maybe he, he drinks a beer or hits a joint, but then he comes to the conclusion that, oh yeah, now I am starting to jones for the Xanax again. If he comes to that conclusion, that would be a lapse with meaning that we actually applaud. Like we kind of, we kind of like them when they happen. So I'm like, if that happens again, that's positive that this kid would take all his knowledge and all his, what he's gained and be able to apply it to himself right pretty darn quickly which is what a lapse is defined as right would be big steps toward way good independent long-term thinking yeah and and because in that moment recovery is still working because they're still recognizing what's happening they're still it's, it's not like they're completely out of control or completely back in denial like they were to begin yeah. with right and they can get it back on track quickly if they make the right decisions okay all right what's our what's our fourth scenario Fourth scenario is when your kid is in treatment and maybe has been there one day, maybe even up to four or five weeks, this is where parents make a big mistake is that they um, stop talking to their counselor because whew, that's over. Ooh, everything's golden now. I can breathe now. Yeah. Ooh, let's open a bottle of wine and celebrate because our kid is in treatment. Mm-hmm. But what's going to happen is you're going to hear, I always say like up to 40 sentences that are going to pull on your heartstrings. Like and Amber says, pull on the dad's purse and the mom's heartstrings. And it's going to, they're going to try to emotionally blackmail you out of treatment. Mm-hmm. My roommate is harassing me, stealing my stuff. There are people here who are using heroin and meth, and that's making me really want to go do those drugs when I'm really here for Xanax. Mm-hmm. Um, I can't think it's so loud. Everyone's immature. This place is stupid. It costs way too much money. I've learned what I need to learn. I'm good. I just want to come home. I can't finish my schooling here. You're going to hear all kinds of things. You may even hear I'm being like, my roommate is molesting me. Like I've heard that. (laughs) Right. They're not. I've learned my lesson. I promise. I've come home. I get a sponsor. I'm going to go to meetings. I swear I'm done. Be prepared. These sentences are empty. They're just, I always say, well, if that's happening, then you need to talk to a staff member or you need to talk to some your counselor there. Don't take it on as a parent and try to resolve, get in the middle, talk them out of it or think, well, look, maybe it's true and I'm going to bring them home. If it's true, someone at the, at the place is going to call you and say, right. hey, we have a problem. And, and if your kid tells you something bad is happening at the place and you're really worried, you can oh. secretly behind the scenes not do some investigation and find out yourself, but don't play into the conversation because chances are it's not true. Not true. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right. Okay. So that be prepared for that. And that's, that's a lot because that's really difficult as a parent to hear some of those things and not think maybe we've messed up. Maybe we should take them out. And, and there are guys, there are some treatment centers that aren't great. So that's what Amber's point is pretty valid. Like call and just mm-hmm. check. And if you get a vibe that's gross, don't go get them and bring them home. Find another place. Right. Okay. But that's why I say, do your homework up front so that you, you, you really know that you're sending them to a good place. Right. And and sometimes parents say, well, you know, what if they meet somebody who's on more harder drugs than they are? And and I always say, you know what, that could happen. It's possible that that could happen. You know, it's possible that this might not work. But if they don't go to treatment, you can guarantee they're going to meet somebody doing hard drugs and you can guarantee that it's not going to work. Right. So to be honest, I tell parents, like, it doesn't really matter. Your child's problem, whether it was with lifesavers, marijuana or alcohol led to the same set of problems that the meth or heroin addicts problems 
were the same right. things, the same six criteria met with the same falling apart of life. So right. it doesn't really matter. Right. Right. Okay. So, so there's the prepared for like all the things that they're going to sort of pull on your heartstrings to get you to come get them. Yep. Okay. It is important that you remain on the same page with, so that everybody understands why we're doing what we're doing. Mm -hmm. Keep, keep boundaries of, you know, are we, he can't come home or how long does he need to stay before he can come home? Uh, Keep staying educated as to what's next. The biggest problem people make, one of the biggest mistakes they make is they send someone to treatment for 30 days, 45 days, but they have no idea what's really entailed in long-term recovery or what aftercare should or could look like. And the mistake that people make is they bring people home after a short amount of time with nothing in place and change is where addiction dances with the devil because you take them away from their counselor, their sponsor, the meetings they knew, their friends, their sober activities, and you put them back in a place, even if it's a different location for aftercare, and then none of that's in place. Right. That's where we lose it. And and we say on this channel, you need to be five steps ahead. And so, okay, you got them to treatment. Now you need to, you need to be thinking about the next three steps Mm -hmm. before you're there. That's what, that's what we're all about. Strategy, strategic, making decisions and being ahead of the game and not reactive to the situation. That's how you, that's how you win this war. Yeah. Because initially as we go into it, your kid is playing chess and we're playing checkers. You're when chasing we, them. We're not chasing we them. To get ahead. Treatment, we want to be playing chess and they're playing right. checkers. So, right. it's, it's, mm-hmm. so there's that. Um, don't keep spinning around them completely. I mean, for, for months, years, this is consumed all of our right. energy, time, emotional Go back to it yourself. You have, if you have other children, like don't drop them, don't ignore them, spend time talking to them, enjoy them while you're also thinking and planning, but also it's okay to enjoy your life. Mm -hmm. It's absolutely fine to focus on yourself and your job or your hobbies or your family and take sort of a a break from that. It's it's not okay. It's actually vital. Get yourself back on track. Like they're getting their self back on track. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing is, Keep talking to other parents, whether it's mm-hmm. a group you go to, an Al-Anon, a family support group. I love treatment centers that have a family component, whether they have a support system online or in person, mm-hmm. they have a family counselor. It is This is important. So you, first of all, hear other stories that you might go, oh yeah, my kid's starting to do that too. Mm-hmm. I'll learn from that. It's really important that you keep your educational support system in place and for us we did it for a long 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 time and it was Mm -hmm. invaluable right right all right so um we're about out of time if you're watching this and you um want to talk to campbell about your situation either they're in treatment or, or you're trying to figure out how to get them out of denial and get them there Campbell is the gal for you. That's what she does all day, every day. I'm going to put the link in the description for you. So you know how to um, schedule an appointment with Campbell if you're interested in that. Um, Like I said before, she, this is what she does. She stays five steps ahead and you need a guide in this world because this is like a whole new planet that you're on now. You need to know what to deal with and, and what's coming next and be ready for it. And that's, that's what Campbell does. And I know Campbell, you have people tell you all the time, like, yep. That's exactly what Campbell said was going to happen. Like literally the next day, calling back up. Yeah, they did that thing today that you said they was going to do today. <laughs> so I would ask me if my real name was Alexa. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. Because it's predictable, right? And you need to be ready for the next move. Okay. Thank you so much for joining us, Campbell. Yeah, you've my been pleasure. awesome. You've given us a lot of wisdom. And hopefully you've helped a lot of people not make mistakes that they're going to regret. I hope so. Thanks, everybody. Bye, guys.